right, here we go. Episode six, Munchkin Dungeon, we're painting the dwarf. But before we dive into that, hey, if you can, and you like what's going on in this channel, and you want to see more, because we're trying to build it up, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I can't do more without the subscriptions. I need your support. We need you. Nerd Knights Painting needs you. You're pivotal to this, so hit that subscribe button if you like what you see and you want to keep coming around because I'm trying to post one video a week, if not more. We're going to be taking this old gray piece of crap and turn into this decently looking painted miniature that's going to look good. Uh, check me out on Instagram, nerd.nights, where we're going to be posting new stuff all the time, what's coming up, and future stuff. Um, so we're going to be uh, painting the dwarf from Munchkin Dungeon, and we're going to be basing it off of the actual card from the game, obviously. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot to this model. It's pretty simple. Um, we're not gonna be using a crazy amount of paints, some washes, and that's about it. So go ahead and start off by priming the miniatures. I primed them all at once using Corax White spray paint from Citadel. And I did them all at once so I could have them all ready to go. So go ahead and do that right now before we jump into it. You can also use an airbrush if you want, but I use Spray paint, because it saves a ton of time. So yeah, all right, let's go. Start off with the Bugman's Glow. This is the one and only flesh tone we're gonna use on the dwarf. Face, hands, and ears. You can't see the hand behind the shield, it's just molded into the actual miniature itself. Um, but go ahead and hit that face, hit those hands. If you get in the eyes, not a problem. Um, if you get a little bit on the beard, not a problem. We're going to be cleaning that up here in a little bit. Um, but just hit those uh, two, three areas and it should look like, uh, like this. For the beard, we are using Dryad Bark. If you get it in the mouth, that's completely fine because we're gonna be using a wash to fill that in here in a little bit. Make sure you get the eyebrows as well and the hair sticking out from behind the helmet um, behind the miniature. For the axe and the shield, we're gonna be using your standard lead belcher from GW. Um, we're gonna be doing some contrast painting a little bit. Not using contrast paints, but going dark silver versus light silver on the ax and in the edges of the ax. Hit that shield, get behind the shield as well, and we're gonna be doing the helmet. Um, so hit all those main areas. And then after we're done putting that base coat on, we're gonna be doing uh, Nolan Oil here in a minute. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Oh, and also get the belt buckle. Um, as you can see under his beard in the front, there's a tiny little belt buckle. Hit that as well. From the picture, the shield has some contrast, so I'm using some Grey Knight steel to get the portion behind the anvil. Um, it's got like a blue tint to it. Very subtle, but you can you can tell, which kind of matches what it has on the the artwork. For the handle of the axe, top part two, um, we're going to be using Morfang Morn Fang Brown. So just hit those areas real quick. If you make a mistake, go back over it with some Buckman's Glow. No big deal. For the shirt, we're gonna be using Jokerio, 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 whatever. Jokero orange, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, front, back, sleeves. Um, and then we're also gonna be hitting this with a wash here in a little bit, but you don't have to be crazy careful, but you know, the less you mess up, the less you have to fix because this, these Munchkin miniatures don't have a lot of uh, crevices. They're mostly flat surfaces. For the belt, we are using Rhinox Hide. Um, 
Again, if you get too much on the orange, just go back with the orange and just paint over it real, real nice and neat. For the shoes, we're using dark gray from a model color from Vallejo. Pretty easy. Kind of a pain to get underneath it though. I did have trouble with that. You probably will too if you're doing the same thing. For the Viking tusks on the helmet, we're using ivory. Pretty, pretty easy. Just try not to get on the helmet, because I did that. All right, now we're gonna go into shading. Uh, for the skin, we're using Reichland Flush Shade. I know I don't have a picture in the bottom left-hand corner, because I forgot to take a picture of the Flush Shade, and I thought I had one saved in my computer, but obviously I don't. So, Reichland Flush Shade, skin, pretty easy. That's all we're doing. For the metal portions, we are gonna be using our standard Nolan oil because lead belcher and Nolan oil are like peanut butter and jelly. They're magical together and they're amazing. Nice even coat on there and uh, let that set for a while. Don't forget the belt buckle either. It's easy to miss, it's so tiny. For the orange, we're gonna be doing Fugin Orange. Uh, just go over that entire thing. And uh, if you get a little bit over in the excess, not a problem. You ain't gonna notice a difference, so pretty easy. For the rest of the miniature, we are going to be using Agrax Earthshade for the beard. Um, the wood part on the axe shoes. If you didn't use Nona, you can use that, the Agrax Earthshade. Um, and then if you want to use the Agrax on the horns instead of Nona, you can do that too. Um, or you can mix 50-50 if you want. It's up to you. All right, shades are done. You let it sit, it's completely dry. And as you can tell, there is some contrast to it, which looks decent. First thing we're gonna use is Ruin Fang Steel. And we're gonna be doing this on a couple layers for the ax. The, you can see the definition between the end of the ax versus the middle of the ax. We just wanna hit those edges, as you can see from the card art. We also want to hit the anvil on the shield, and we also want to hit the edges of the shield. Be real careful. I used a size 10 brush while doing this, just to be real extra careful. The edges of the ax, I think I put three or four coats on to make it pop out a little bit more, and then we're going to use a little um, added bonus to make the middle of that ax a little bit darker here in a minute. Just be careful going around that axe. It's gonna make it stand out a lot more. But it's gonna look really good. Um, just be careful because uh, we're gonna be putting that Grey Knight steel back onto the, the shield behind the anvil to give it that silver blue contrast, I guess you could say. Uh, I also got part of the helmet too, to give it that nice little shiny helmet look. Um, and I'm just going over the top of the shield again. It took me a couple layers to do the shield um, for some reason. I might have thinned it just a little too much, but um, two to three layers. Just the original base coat of Dryad Bark for the eyebrows and 
beard. I did get some silver on the beard, so I'll just cover that back up. Um, and on the back of the head as well, just to give it some nice darkness. It's pretty dark on the picture, so I kept it dark. Just a quick reapplication of Rhinex hide for the belt. And that's all we're gonna do with that. To make the axe stand out a little bit more, we're gonna be using Iron Warriors for the middle of the axe and the adjoining places to the middle, as you can see here what I'm doing. Doing that front and then we're doing the back and that'll give it a nice dark versus real light silver. It's gonna look real good. Reapplication of Jokeryu. That's not even close to being right, but that's what it is now. To the silver portion, or silver, to the orange portion of the uh, tunic, I guess you could say. And uh, it took two to three layers because that orange wash is pretty strong. So two to three layers of the watered down Jakuiro orange. There you go. <clears throat> and uh, it'll look real nice once it's done. For the handle of the axe, scrag brown, gives it that nice, simple brown. Kind of like a baby poop brown is what I would call it. Uh, and it makes it stand out just a little bit more, looks good. Just a reapplication of ivory for the the horns on the helmet, that's it. For the shoes, we're gonna be using dark gray again. And uh, it, this, the, the model's a pain because it's hard to get underneath to get the entire shoe, so I had to switch to a smaller brush off camera to get those those bottom parts of the shoe. Um, but yeah. For the skin, all we're gonna do is a reapplication of Bugman's Glow. Hit those uh, fingers and then the nose, underneath the cheekbones. You can basically do the reapplication on the entire thing. Just don't get into the crevices. Um, use a smaller brush to get underneath the eyebrows um, above the eye because the size one I was using or size two I was using was way too big. So just hit those spots. All right, the eyes. I am using pure white from Vallejo, model color. I start off using a size two brush. You can do that, uh, but then I end up switching to a 10-0 brush or a 5-0 brush. Um, don't, you gotta get, oh gosh, this is crazy. It's just, it's all over the place. Cause the next step we're gonna do is gonna fill in anything you kind of messed up. As long as you didn't get it on the, on the cheekbone or above the eye, it's gonna look just fine. So. Put on a majority of the eye and the next step is going to fill it all in, you'll see. As you can see, it looks crappy, then it's like magic. You're going to put that Nolan oil, a nice healthy drop of Nolan oil in there and boom, it fills it all in. And, oh man, that looks pretty good. 
kind of judge how, how deep you want that black to look. I like it to look a little bit darker because that kind of matches with the um, box art. So nice healthy drop in there. If you need to get some out, wipe off your brush on a towel and then just soak it up and it'll soak right back up. It's super easy. End up getting a bunch of no all on the nose and I'm just gonna go over that again with some more Bugman's glow just to fill it in another two or three layers and it'll get it right out. And as you can see here, I got to fill in the black they got on the nose, but it happens. After that new one oil is dry, lighten those eyes right back up. Just get a little bit around the black and uh, just the major parts of the eye, it'll brighten it back up and really stand out. Looks good. Model's done, hit that base, Mechanica Standard Gray, two, three layers, boom. Pretty decent model. I mean, it's not gonna win you an award or send you to space, but it is gonna look good on the table. And that's typically all it takes to get the panties dropping. Um, pretty good, I'm happy with it. Didn't take me a crazy amount of time and it looks pretty decent um, for these type of models. So, good on us. Decent looking model. You rocked it. Specifically, you rocked it. Follow the instructions. Looks decent. You're gonna play Munchkin Dungeons, your friends, your girlfriend, your wife, and be like, oh my gosh, you're so awesome. These are so cool. I'm like, I know, there, come over here, let's make out. Yeah, sweet. Uh, thanks for watching. I can't thank you guys enough for supporting this channel and uh, watching my videos. Like, like I said in the beginning, please subscribe. Don't hurt. I mean, hit that little bell. And then just watch these quick little videos um, as I've got a ton of Kickstarters coming at the end of the year and then going through all through next year. Bloodborne, Madara, we're going to be doing. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.